everyone uh, this is Elise with White Picket Vintage and I'm back today with another haul this time everything you see here came from an estate sale um, I haven't been to any for a while uh, prices are really going up out here and I've kind of avoided them but I stopped by this one on a whim and I'm really glad I did I got some great items so the first thing I'm going to show you is something i was kind of excited about it's pretty cool but it's kind of big so i want to get it off the table because as you can see the table is really full um this was on the fireplace hearth and it is a giant walnut and it opens is that cool so <laughs> most people i don't think most people to these days are going to use this as a nut bowl but I think because it is so large, it could even be used to hold remote controls or something like that. Uh, it would look really fun sitting on a side table or a coffee table and be a great conversation piece to have something like this in your home. But I'll probably put this, uh, probably put it in my Etsy shop for somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 to $60, with sh uh, including shipping. I paid $8 for it, a little more than I usually like to pay for something like this, especially since I don't, I didn't really know what its value was, but because it's such a unique item and such a, I guess a fun piece, I decided to go ahead and spring for it. I'm sure somebody out there will look at it and just have to have it for their home just to, so their guests will ask them, what the heck are you doing with a giant walnut? Okay. Uh, next on the list is this little hole digger, just an inexpensive little garden implement, but it has a great patina. I think I paid a dollar for it. I'll probably end up holding on to it and putting it in my booth when I open that uh, as part of a spring or summer display. But it's uh, kind of rusty and it's got a wood handle and it's pretty cool looking. Okay, they had a lot of Christmas items. Most of them were vintage, but not the really highly sought after vintage going back to the 40s and 50s and that kind of stuff. But they did have some cool stuff. Now, this lady was a ceramicist and she had a lot of craft stuff. She had greenware and a lot of things like that. So I think that she made these herself, but they're really cool. There's a whole bag of them. There's 21 altogether. There were actually 23, but two of them had chips. So I pulled those out. I think I paid three dollars for the entire bag and you can see that they're just little they're just little white little angels and they're napkin holders so I'm probably going to split this up into groups of six each and sell them in my Etsy shop a little closer to Christmas time for probably 20 to maybe 24 with including shipping something like that okay get those out of the way all right, next is another ceramic item that I'm sure she hand painted these. And they're little, they're little nursery horses. And they're in three colors, kind of a lavender, a yellow, and a blue. And they told me at the estate sale that they think they were supposed to go on a carousel of some sort. They've got a hole that goes all the way through. But they couldn't find the carousel, but they sold them to me for, I, I think, maybe $3 for all of them, something like that. And what I think I'm going to do with them is uh, put a dowel in them and then put a clip on it so that it could be used as a photo holder or name holder. It could be something used at a, um, at a shower or in a baby's room or something like that. I'm not sure what I'm going to... I, Beyond that, I don't know. I don't know if I'll sell them all together or one at a time and how much they'll be. I honestly don't know until I see how, you know, how good they come out if they do it all. Okay, so that's the ceramics. Oh, the basket, they just threw it in there because I put my stuff in it. And by the time I left, I had such a big pile, they were just throwing stuff in there. Like, just give it to her. So that was kind of cool, which that's uh, what this is back here, this little trivet basket. I don't know if this is just a tray basket by itself or it was supposed to be a lid to something. I didn't see anything that it went with. Uh, but it's a nice looking, tightly woven little basket lid. So I thought it was pretty cool. And it was free. Okay, and linens, you know, I do linens sometimes. So I did find this one set of sheets. It's got a nice pattern on it. It's in good condition. I'll probably end up listing it. 
I don't know if it's the set or if it's just a single sheet. I'm going to have to check it out. Uh, it was a little hectic in there and I was holding everything in my arms until I could get up front and then I didn't want to miss things so it was kind of hard to look at stuff. And I always have excuses for why I don't look at things more carefully. But anyway, that's, that's my excuse for that day. Uh, but anyway, it's a nice it's a nice linen, so I'll probably put it in the Etsy shop, sell it for about fifteen dollars, something like that. Now, this little piece was in the older linens, and it's a beautiful. Well, let me open it up so you can actually see it better. It is a beautiful piece of tatted uh, linen, and would make a great tabletop. So, and it's in excellent condition. I don't see any holes in it. I think it has one stain. Um, Otherwise, really, that's about it. So it's just a great piece. Uh, probably put it in my Etsy shop for about $15, uh, including shipping, something like that. And then another, just a, a, pillow, a single pillowcase, so I'm not sure what that's for. I'll probably keep that and use that for sewing because it's a nice cotton. Okay, so we're narrowing it down a little bit. All right. Next on the list, I'm sorry I'm going so fast. I'm trying to speed it up a little bit just because there's a lot here and I don't want to bore you with a long, you know, 40 minute uh, uh, video here. But here is the next group. And this is actually the first thing, the first stack that I got when I walked in. They had a lot of vintage cookbooks. So that's the very first thing I did was I pulled out this whole stack of books. Uh, these books were... A dollar a piece for every one of them and then when he saw how much I liked the cookbooks he went to the garage he pulled out this little tin recipe box and he threw it in for free so it's cute it's a nice green color I love recipe boxes so there's that free not sure what I'm gonna do with it I have a collection of them I might even put them in a lot together on Etsy because I don't really have a place to display them in my house and that might go with it okay so first up is this cute little book um, it's uh, not especially valuable and it's actually really small but the graphics on it are fantastic I'm actually thinking I might cut out the pages and with the graphics would make a great kitchen to, uh, uh, print put this on one uh, in one frame and this in another frame and hang it in a kitchen it would be just fantastic it's got a great vintage look to it it's got the cool font up here uh, this I think this one was printed in 66 so it's kind of got that 60s kind of psychedelic font going on or you know the start of the psychedelic font okay this one was uh, I think this one was 1961 if I recall again it's got a great uh, graphic on it uh, inside is a little more plain it doesn't have the really cool pictures that the other one did but the cover is nice so this would even be nice just in a display or on a uh, you know in a background or something like that in the kitchen now these this is actually the same. It's two versions of the same cookbook, American, American Woman Cookbook. And I don't know, this one looks a little bit, well, I'm rambling. Okay, this one is a later version of it. So I don't know if they changed it or not, but I actually have a copy of this one from the early 40s. And this book to me was kind of cool because it actually has old recipes that relate to um, rationing stamps. So it would have recipes in it that would help you to uh, ration sugar and things like that. So it was definitely uh, printed during wartime. And this one, I believe, if I looked at it, was 1938. And then this one was much later, was 1960, I think, something like that if I remember right. Don't quote me because I had so many to look up I might have forgotten one. But anyway, so I just think it's not that exciting to look at, just the green binding. But just to me, uh, the one that I had, I always thought was pretty cool. And it's just got a lot of, uh, you know, just the real basic standard recipes uh, that every everybody needs to have in their kitchen. Uh, again, this is another kind of just a standard old fashioned style cookbook that everybody would have. And I just got this one because it was an older one. And I believe this one was out of the 60s, if I recall. Kind of look, yeah, I think 1961. And you can kind of see from the graphics that it looks like that. And then 
Last in the group are these two, which I know everybody out there has seen, but I actually got two of them. One says that it was the second printing of the first edition. The other one, that page is missing, so I don't know when it was printed. But this one, um, I think if I remember, this was printed in 42, something like that when I looked it up. So very old. No, no, no. 53. That's what it was. That was the first year that this was printed. So this was came out in 1953. So they're a little beat up, but I think that's actually really nice. If somebody, if you have a farmhouse style and you put this on your counter with some other old cookbooks, that's going to look really cool. Even in that tattered, uh, you know, even looking all tattered like this, it's going to look like your mom or your grandmother you which obviously is what happened this book has been used a lot it's been well used somebody um pulled this out probably every single day for years to look things up so i just think that gives it a great story and it's got to me that's patina and i like it so i bought both of those they're going to go in my etsy shop i'll probably sell them for about 20 dollars a piece just because they're um you know they're just th that iconic gingham check and They've just got a great look to them. Okay, so moving on. We're about to get back to more Christmas stuff. This is a box that was in, um, in a bedroom, and they sold the entire box for, oh, I think it was three, no, five dollars. I think I paid for this entire box. Okay, first of all, let me explain what it's in. The, they had these in the garage. They sold these to me for $2 a piece. So I thought these would be helpful in my house for uh, organizing for this stuff. Uh, because I've got a mess. As you can see behind me, I've got a lot of stuff. And this is just a fraction of what I have. This is the things I've pulled out that I need to take pictures of. So I need all the help I can get in organizing. So for $2 a piece, these went home with me. So one of the items that I got was this whole collection of these sequin, uh, let's see if I can get a good, there we go, sequin ornaments. There's the regular ball shaped ornaments, there's a bell shape. Okay, come on, light, cooperate. There we go. Another smaller ball shaped ornament, candy canes, and this one's nicer. I had to put this in a separate bag. Uh, there's a story behind it. Uh, I don't know why, but it's uh, probably the nicest one in the group. Most elaborate boots. And yeah, this one, uh, a wreath, but it's broken. So I don't know. I may just keep and use the vintage -y parts. Okay, light, cooperate here. Can you see that? There we go. And then this one, which is just kind of plain. So, but the entire group of all of these, I think was $5. So these are pretty cool. Um, I'm going to put these, I'm going to put these on eBay just because I think that's where people look for things like this. They're very popular right now. And I actually, these are all, let's see, I found some. Yeah, these are all from 1981 to 1989, at least the ones that I could find that had dates on them. So they're definitely vintage and it's making a comeback. People really like those ornaments. So I'll put those on eBay. Maybe somebody will buy them now um, so they can make them and have them ready for Christmas. Then I found just a few random little ornaments. One of them was this little angel, and she is really cute. Uh, she says made in Hong Kong, and she's beaded and even the bottom of her. So she's just really cute. I'll put her um, probably on Etsy closer to Christmas time. Not a whole lot. I'll probably sell her for maybe... 12 to 14 uh, including shipping and then just a few other little Christmas knickknacks a couple of bells uh, this one is uh, 1980 it's marked 1983 AGC I don't know what that is and this one is Lefton so these two little bells and honestly again I don't even know what I paid for them I think a dollar or two a piece and then a couple of other little items so i not entirely sure what i'll do with them uh, probably around christmas time i'll put them in a lot on ebay along with some other things that i have that are small christmas ornaments okay and then we have one more box 
This box is linen. Well, what this is, is this is incomplete needlework. They sold me this entire box for $3. So I thought, thought it was a bargain for what's in it. I don't know if I sell it, if somebody's going to want to finish it. This is the pattern that's on it. And in places, this is complete. In other places, it's not. But there's this large piece that looks like tablecloth size. And then there's these two smaller pieces that are kind of narrow. But I think these pieces would be, maybe they were meant to be a runner. I'm not entirely sure. But honestly, I think these pieces would, would be great as a valance uh, for curtains. And they're really nice. Uh, nice muslin fabric. So I bought that. And then, um, yeah, a bunch of apples just thrown in there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. But maybe, oh, I know. My daughter suggested when I do back to school display. So maybe I'll hang on to them for that. Uh, there were two of these. They're just printed pillowcases ready for cross stitch. I'm not sure if, I, I don't know if I'll sell those or not. Um, they're, even, even small items, the shipping is expensive. These would probably cost me close to $5 just to ship. And I don't know if anybody's going to want to pay that for them when they can just go buy their own pillowcases and, and I don't know, scan a, a, a design and do their own. I'm not sure, but I might put them on Etsy and see what happens. Okay, this is part of that other one. Okay, that's another one. I guess there's another runner. And then there's just a few miscellaneous pieces of needlework. Um, some of these I might keep and do something with. Some I might donate. I'm not sure. This one is kind of nice. If I sell it the way it is, then I don't, it's going to be less expensive to ship. Um, I am going to do a video that shows, I am going to do a video on how to frame something like this. The easiest way to do that. So if you want to watch that, then maybe you'd want to buy something like this that's not framed. Okay, here's another little, little bitty one. These, getting these boxes like this are kind of fun. I had no idea that all this other stuff was in here. Um, I just bought it for the the main pieces that were on top. And this one's nice. Okay. So, oh, I don't know if that's showing up very well on the camera. There we go. Nicely done. So, anyway, there's that box. That was fun to get. It's kind of like a, kind of like a little treasure chest when you get a box like this. You never know what's in it until you've had gotten it home. I was so excited. Came home, we just started hauling all this stuff in. I couldn't wait to get my hands on it and see what was in it. Okay, so this last item that I'm going to show you did not come from the estate sale. This was a separate item that I bought at a thrift store yesterday. I went by just to, you know, just to drop in. It's next door to Har Harbor Freight. I had to go over there to get some drill bits. Decided to go on in, make sure I wasn't missing out on anything. And I came across this copper pot now at first glance you know you can see how dark the patina is on it it's very dingy looking it really doesn't look like a whole lot uh, there's rust on the handle and it's just not that exciting so I guess I was lucky in that regard because everybody else must have passed it by but I have recently picked up some copper pots at a garage sale that were kind of a low end a brand, something that you might buy at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something like that. But in doing research on those, I learned a little bit more about uh, copper, copper cookware. And that came in handy because I had a little trouble finding any marks on it. But when I did, oh, and you, there's no way this is going to show. You can barely even see it in person, much less on the camera. But right here, Maybe it's just barely showing up. It says, oh gosh, what was it? Villa, Villa du. I hope I'm saying that right. Villa du France. So I was able to look this up and sure enough, this is an, a vintage high-end piece of French copperware. You can tell because the thickness of it. When I picked it up, I knew it was a higher quality item because it was much heavier than the one I had at home. So I will do another video and I'm going to show you the difference in the depth so that you'll get a 
if you want to try to find this kind of thing or if you do find it and you want to know what you're finding you'll have something to compare it to uh, but this it's got a nice thick wall on it the other thing that's interesting about this when I got it home and I started researching it is that this lid is pretty uncommon I found a few of them that actually have a lip uh, or a little edge on it but none that were like this that were just flat and the lids with this long handle that I was finding they were selling on eBay for about $125 just for this lid so I'm pretty confident that I can list this for about $150 so I paid I paid $9.99 for it there we go oh I hope you can see that boy this lighting in here is terrible um, I paid $9.99 for it so if I can get and that would be I would add shipping to that because this is a heavy item it probably cost me at least another 15 to 20 just to ship this so I would probably want to get about 150 out of it so that's a pretty good profit margin for just a quick trip into the thrift stop uh, thrift store when I wasn't expecting to find a whole lot so anyway that's it for this haul I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you liked the best and um, what you think was my best find and tune in for my next video I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial uh, like I said I'm going to do one on how to mount a, a needlework piece into a frame and I also have another one coming up on a decoupage project but the first one that I'm going to bring you is how to get the yellow out of your vintage linens and I will probably have that one posted up in just a few days so please stay tuned if you enjoyed this video and you or you enjoy my DIY videos please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that like button so that I can get uh, more views and I can keep on uh, bringing these videos to you thank you so much for stopping by and sharing my haul with me bye bye